But this morning we're going to look at some Baptist history, and we're going to look at um, Dr. John Clark, the man, the man that would become Dr. John Clark. And John Clark was born in London in 1609. Um, he would become a skilled physician and lawyer, studied at Oxford, and I believe while at Oxford he was, he was saved, and then he began to study theology also. And as a new Christian, um, and as a man that, that knew theology and, and studied his Bible, he began to distance himself from the Church of England uh, because he realized it's biblical error. And I'll just take a minute and kind of describe the situation in England at that time. So this is the early 1600s, and uh, the Church of England is, is uh, correctly named. It is the State Church of, of England. Um, if you think of it as the, the king, uh, in one sense, was over the church. He would be as a, kind of like the pope of the Church of England. He had a figurehead under him, but he controlled that person. And um, so the Church of England is the, is the state church, not very far removed from the Catholicism that it came out of, is the way to think of it. And, and godly people realize this as they study their Bibles, that the Church of England had gone far, far off its tracks and, and uh, was, was not, for the most part, um, teaching scripture. And so there, there are people in England who realize this, of course, and they were known as dissenters. And this is the best way to describe them. History would call them dissenters. They were, they were dissenting. They were, they were against um, the, the Church of England. And they tried to have their own, uh, their own churches. Um, they just thought, you know, we'll leave you alone. We just want to go over here and have our own church and worship God uh, the way the Bible says. Um, there were two types of people in England, and, I, and this is important to kind of study this, I think, because it's very confusing if you, and maybe it will be confusing as I go through it, but there are two types of dissenters in England at that time. There are people that, so both these are very similar in, in their, their biblical beliefs, They're very similar, but they, they had a different view of the Church of England. Uh, one set of people were called separatists, and they felt that the Church of England was so far gone that they wanted to separate themselves and start a, new, start a new church. Let's start a Baptist church. Let's start a Presbyterian church. Let's start something else. We're going to get out of the Church of England. And they were known as separatists, so we can, we can remember that by the fact they wanted to separate themselves. There was another type of person, in, uh, and I would say Bible believer, that were called Puritans. And so, oh, by the way, the separatists, if you recall the pilgrims that came over in 1620, they were separatists. So I know all these P words, Pilgrim, Puritan, Plymouth Rock, very confusing. But in 1620, the separatists came to America to worship God. They called themselves pilgrims. So they were separatists. They wanted to start an entirely different, different church. Um, the other type of people that dissented against the Church of England are called uh, Puritans. And that name comes from the fact that they, they also thought the, the uh, Church of England was off the rails, but they, they wanted to stay in the Church of England and purify it from within. So hence the term Puritan. Now, the pilgrims came over in 1620. The Puritans were, were I'd say, so um, strong in England that they got the government to grant them a charter to come to America, and they came to America 10 years later in 1630, and they started Massachusetts Bay Colony. And this is, this is confusing, and I, I try to put a little chart up here about you know, who they are, but it's important for our story and for us to understand this, to understand some of the beginnings of America. So we have the separatists coming over in 1620, that's the pilgrims, 1630, the Puritans come over and they are granted a charter uh, to begin a colony, Massachusetts Bay. Now, um, both of these people are severely persecuted by the Church of England. Both of these kinds of people are, are severely uh, persecuted by the Church of England because they're dissenting against the church. And the church had imprisoned people, the Church of England had, had imprisoned people, um, they had executed some, uh, some people over this, and so it was, it was not good. And that's why people were leaving England, Bible believers were leaving England and coming to this land that they had heard of. They could worship God the, um, the way they wanted to worship God, the way they felt the Bible uh, taught them. So John Clark, to go back to our, our, uh, our main story today and the events surrounding him, um, he, 
he did something similar to the pilgrims. He went to Holland when things got so bad. Remember, the pilgrims had gone to Holland first. That didn't work out. It wasn't, in a sense, as advertised. And uh, he then, he and his wife went, went to America. Um, this is after the pilgrims. This is after the, the, the Puritans had come. Um, you know, it's the 1600s, so there wasn't great communication. There was communication, but especially overseas or from continent to continent. And when, when Clark arrived, when he and his wife arrived in Massachusetts, um, they were bitterly uh, disappointed, I guess I would say, uh, by what they found. They came into a situation that they, they, thought, they thought there was going to be freedom of worship, and what they found was a situation that was very much like uh, what they left in England. Unfortunately, over in America, the Puritans and the Separatists had kind of become one. They, the Separatists had lost their identity, and we have a state church now in Massachusetts. That's called the Congregational Church. Now, I don't know if this is, are you, are you, are you hanging with me here? Uh, and, and what had happened was they had come over for religious freedom, but things had changed. And they never got away from the Church of England, and they started this Congregational Church. The Congregational Church is, is essentially the Church of England in America. And, and uh, uh, all that uh, good intentions of separating and starting on their own churches it kind of got lost, and, the, and many of the, most of the separatists kind of became Puritans um, in just a few years. And John Clark comes into this atmosphere, he realizes, oh my, it's not what I thought. Now he's a doctor, and a very good physician, very talented, and when he arrives, there is sickness in the air, and he dives right in. He's a problem solver, he's not a complainer, he dives right in helping the people medically. But again, they were very, very saddened and disappointed by what, what they found. Um, as he worked with the people uh, very quickly, that was in, he came over in November of 1637. So November he comes over. By December, he and his wife had decided we have to, we have to leave, we have to get out of here. And so uh, he, um, because maybe he was a physician and well-respected, he was able to gather up 18 people and they left Massachusetts to find a place where they could worship God. Now, um, they would sail down, or they, would, they would get on a boat and they would sail to a couple different colonies. Um, I believe they went to Delaware, they found it to be uh, very harsh. It was, again, this is December of, of 1637. Um, found to be a very harsh winter there, so they went a little further south. They, they finally came down uh, to Rhode Island, or what would become Rhode Island, and there they met Roger Williams. This is a picture of Roger Williams. Roger Williams, actually John Clark knew about Roger Williams. He had come over just a few years earlier with the same prospects, the same excitement about the, to, to pre, he was a preacher, he was gonna to come to, to uh, America and become one of the uh, Massachusetts Bay preachers. When he came over, he found this great upheaval and he found a state church just as bad as the church in, church in England. Uh, it wasn't called a state church, it was kind of the Commonwealth church. Uh, but, uh, and he began to preach really hard against this. Against this. Um, he preached so hard against this that the, that the government of Massachusetts Bay decided to kick him out of the country. And they were going to put him on a boat one morning uh, and send him back to England. They were going to completely throw him out of America. He escaped. Uh, this is a picture of him escaping in the middle of the winter. He escaped and ran to the Indians who took him in. Uh, that's a whole other story, we've talked about that, but Roger Williams, a really a man of vision and, and a, a, a truly great man, um, would learn the Indians' culture and language, and later he would become a missionary among these Indians. But um, so our, our, our 18 people with John Clark, they find, they run into uh, Roger Williams. And Roger Williams is very gracious and very helpful, and he says, Listen, he goes, if you go about 30 miles further south to the island of Aquidneck, um, he said, I think you'll be very happy with what you find there. So they did. And John Clark took his people there. During this time, Clark organizes these people into a church. It's kind of a church in the wilderness, I'd, I'd say. And this is important because this is, this is the first Baptist church in America, the first Baptist church established in America. And this church in the wilderness. They would, they would come to the island of Aquidneck. 
Um, it was uh, not owned by anybody but the Indians. And so doesn't the Lord work in wonderful ways? They were able to negotiate with the Indians because of Roger Williams and his, his, uh, his love for these Indians and, and how much they respected him. They negotiated and paid for this land, and they named um, this, what they said was a paradise, they named it the Isle of Rhodes. And um, this is also the very beginning of the city of uh, Newport, um, uh, Rhode Island. And uh, so John Clark establishes these people, he establishes the church, this is the first Baptist church established in, in America, and then they also establish uh, this church, I'm sorry, this city uh, in, in Rhode Island. And uh, there on that island, um, <clears throat> this is of great historical importance to us, that uh, there on that island, um, these men and women uh, wrote the first governmental document protecting religious freedom. And they, it protected worship, it, it protected, protected uh, differing opinions, and it was called the Portsmouth Compact. And the date was March 7th, 1638. And I want to read to you, I think we have a picture of the actual document on the screen. But it says this, the seventh day of the first month, 1638, we whose names are underwritten do hereby solemnly in the presence of Jehovah incorporate ourselves into a body politic, and as he shall help, we'll submit our persons lives and estates unto our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and to all those perfect and most absolute laws of his given in his holy word of truth, to be guided and judged thereby. In the margin were several uh, verses, and then 23 men um, signed that document. And these banished believers drew up the first written document, the first written government document, um, declaring liberty of conscience for all of its citizens. This is the first time in the history of the world that we would have a document protecting people um, to worship God. And um, then they would found, as I said, the city of, of uh, uh, Newport. Dr. Clark would organize that church into a physical church there in Newport, and the people called him as pastor, and we had the First Baptist Church of Newport, Rhode Island, um, I guess formally established, but it had already been established a few months earlier, formally established in Newport in 1638. So this is a very, very important moment in what will be American history. These documents, that document, is really almost a foreshadowing of the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence, which we've, we've studied. And, um, and so it's very important for what happens in Rhode Island at this time. And we're gonna finish this up next week. Uh, there's, there's much more to the story. And so I wanted to give you kind of a, a beginning of this story of Dr. John Clark and his, and his adventures in America and how God used him and Roger Williams to, to establish the, the first Baptist church established in America.